Edward Allen Carter Jr. provides an example of not just a remarkable soldier who fought for what he believed in and whose courage would be recognised with the Medal of Honour, but of a dark period in American history and of how even heroes could come under suspicion and be persecuted. The son of an African-American evangelist, Carter was nine when his family moved to Calcutta, India. Here he developed an interest in the army while watching soldiers drill at the local barracks. In 1927, Carter's father became a missionary in Shanghai, married a German woman and became friends with some powerful figures, including Chiang Kai-shek, generalissimo of the country. Carter was to become fluent in German and Mandarin Chinese as a result, adding to the Hindi he spoke already. With such powerful connections, Carter Sr. secured a position for his son at a Chinese military academy. In 1932, when Carter was only 15, the Japanese attacked Shanghai in the January 28th incident. Eager for action, Carter fought for a month in savage battles with the Imperial Japanese forces, before his father managed to use his influence to get him out of the combat on the grounds that he was too young. Carter would continue his military education, commissioning as a lieutenant in the Chinese army. In 1936, Carter would go to Spain to fight for the Republicans against the fascist nationalists. He would spend two and a half years in Spain, seeing action in some of the most vicious battles of the war, including the Battle of Terrell, a two-month battle that resulted in 140,000 casualties. America's entry into the Second World War would see Carter enlist in the US Army, where his experience and competence would see him rapidly promoted to Star Sergeant. However, US Army policy at the time limited black servicemen to specific segregated units, or, more often, to rear area duties. Carter, to his frustration, was assigned to transportation duties. This changed following the German counterattack in late 1944, the famous Battle of the Bulge, where the Wehrmacht had counterattacked in the Belgian Ardennes. Critically short of replacements, the US Army had to request volunteers from the African American units to form combat platoons to supplement the numbers in white units. Carter was at the front of the queue. He would see action throughout the drive into Germany, impressing his white officers with his ability and on 23rd of March 1945 would fight a desperate action which would see Carter get injured multiple times. Despite having been shot six times in action, he managed to take out a machine gun nest, a mortar pit, kill multiple enemies and take two prisoners, all single-handed. While returning to his own lines, he was hit by shell splinters from German artillery who apparently were furious that one soldier could cause so much trouble. After the war, he was assigned to the California National Guard and helped train new African-American combat units. Unfortunately, with anti-communist sentiment on the rise, Carter came under suspicion. His exotic upbringing, combined with fighting for the Republican cause in Spain, led to him effectively being drummed out of the army in 1949. The action, according to Carter's son, broke his heart. He was forced to take low-paying jobs and died of lung cancer in 1963. He was 46. But Carter's legacy would not be forgotten. In 1996, recognising the inequality that had been applied to black soldiers in the war, Carter was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honour. This was followed in 1999, when President Clinton sent a letter of apology to Carter's family, and in 2001, a new military ammunition ship, the SSG Edward A. Carter Jr. was commissioned into the fleet, a fitting memorial to a man who fought all over the world. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you are interested in knowing more about Edward Carter and the actions he fought in, please go to Military Matters with the link in the description. Thanks for watching.